Hi everyone. In this bite-sized bit, we're going to discuss while loops and do while loops, specifically with counter variables. So let's go ahead and get started. There are times in our code when we want to iterate or repeat some of our logic over and over again until a particular condition occurs. And sometimes that condition is that we want to repeat a loop a specific number of times. There are a variety of ways that we can do so. For today's exercise, we're going to look at two of them, which is the while loop and the do while loop. I have created a form that has a text box where the user is going to type a number and two buttons to illustrate the while loop and the do while loop. What's going to happen is if the user types a number like a three, we're going to add one plus two plus three and output the result to a message box. If the user types a five, we're going to output 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 using the while loop and the do while loop. I've already created some code behind the scenes for our buttons. Let's take a look at the code for the button associated with the while loop. I have input processing and output. The input and output blocks are fairly straightforward. We're collecting information from our text box for our input. We're also creating our processing variable called int sum. For our output, we're using a message box that's going to show the result of that sum variable and add it to a phrase that says the while loop result is. The new code for today is the processing section. You can see that the first thing I've done is created a integer variable called i. This is going to be our counter variable and it's going to start with a value of 1. Remember, if the user types a 4 in the text box, we're going to calculate 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 and then output that result to our message box. So we're going to always start with the value of 1. Thus, I've set my counter variable i as 1. You will also note that i does not follow our normal naming convention for variables in this class. For counter variables, we relax that criteria if you want to use i's or j's or k's, you can for counter variables. However, if you want to use something more descriptive, like int and then a descriptor, you are welcome to do so. After creating my counter variable, I created my while structure. Let's break it down. First, I typed the word while, and then inside parentheses, I typed the condition that must be true for me to pursue the looping structure. So in this case, if my i counter variable is less than or equal to the int number that my user provided in the text box, I will loop through my structure. If not, I won't loop. Inside the braces underneath my while statement, I have two additional commands. First, I add to int sum the value of i. If this was the first time I was running a loop, i would be equal to 1. My int sum, which started as a 0, would have a 1 added to it and become a 1. Then I increment my i. i++ adds 1 to the value of i. So if this was the first time I was going through my loop, I would increase from 1 to 2. I would then reach my final brace, and Visual Studio would ask the while question again. It would effectively loop to the start, and it would ask the question, is i less than or equal to int number? If that criteria is still true, the looping structure will repeat. Let's say the user had typed a 4 on the form. A 2 is less than a 4, so the loop would repeat. My int sum would be my previous value of 1 plus a 2, and my i would increment from a 1 to a 2, and I would keep repeating the process after my loop is finished, which means that my i has exceeded the value of int number, I'll move to output and my message box will show the results. Let's go ahead and test our code to see if the results match up with what we're expecting. If I start this program and I type a 4 and I click the while loop button, what I'm hoping to see is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, which if my math is correct, should be a 10. When I click the while loop, I see the while loop result is 10. If I increase this value to 5, 
1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 should be 15. And lo and behold, that's the result I get. I strongly encourage viewers of this video to insert a breakpoint on the while click method and watch how all of the variables change as the loop repeats the process over and over again. As always, breakpoint analysis is very illustrative in terms of how the code actually operates. Let's move from our while button to our do while button. The logic in this case is extremely similar. I collect input the exact same way. I output my results the exact same way. The only thing that's different in this case is the do while structure. Instead of starting my loop with a while question, I start my loop with a do statement. I run through the logic inside my braces, and then I ask the question, in this case, is i less than or equal to int number? If it is, I repeat the loop. This means that we are asking the question after the loop has run at least one time, and there will be some ramifications of this structure. Let's test the results of the do while button. If I run my program and I type a 4 and I click the do while button, I get a result of 10, which is exactly what I expect. And similarly, if I type something like a 3, I get a result of 6. So both of these loop structures are working exactly the same way, or so it would appear. We're certainly getting the right results. Let's show a scenario where that is not true. If I type a zero and click the while loop button, the result I'm going to get is probably what you were expecting, which is a zero. In the while loop structure, I ask the question, is my i less than or equal to my int number before I loop? And in this case, the answer is no. i is a one, and the number the user typed is a zero. So the criteria for the loop is not true, and therefore the loop doesn't run at all. The result, however, when we click on the do while loop might surprise you. In this case, the do while loop result is 1. If you stop and think about the code, we don't ask a question about whether or not we should run this loop until after we've run through the loop at least one time. We then ask the while question, while i less than or equal to int number. In this case, the answer is false, and we don't run the loop a second time but we've already run the loop at least once. And as a consequence, int sum has increased from zero to one. The lesson to be learned about while loops versus do while loops is that while loops may run zero to n number of times. Do while loops, however, will always run at least one time and may run n number of times. Different real-world problems will require different looping structures, so use the while loop when it's appropriate and use the do while loop when it's appropriate. Sometimes they will be interchangeable. In some specific circumstances, they will not, so be careful with your logic. We'll revisit while and do while loops in future videos, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. See you next time.